Okay, we're back, and here we are talking about how to handle missing values. Um, all right, so let's first find a uh, column to work with, a variable to work with, where we have some significant missing values. Uh, let's, I think let's check age, because I believe that's one where there may be some missing values. Uh, let's see, so we're going to slice df and say, show us the contents of df where df.age is null. Ah, yes, we have many, many missing ages. And you can see in here that age is set to nan. That's not a number. Scroll down here. We can see that there's quite a few. 177, in fact, which is a lot of our data set. Um, we have 891, so it's a significant chunk. Okay, so here's where um, we have some tough decisions to make. We have 177 of our 891 um, observations that don't have an age. So what can we do? Let's let write it down, think about it. Handling missing age. Strategies. Strategies. Okay, so I think uh, the strategies that we have, the obvious ones, are um, first one, most simple, is we could just drop any observation with missing age. So what about that? Um, that would be, that would certainly solve the problem. The problem is, is that we would lose a lot of valuable information because we would throw away a lot of observations. Um, so I always try to do that one uh, last. Um, this is my last choice, unless I just have a, a very uh, abundant amount of data. And my n is very large. In this case, my n is not so large, so I'm probably going to try to avoid that. All right, what's my next option? Um, I could set all of the ages, set all the NAN ages to uh, zero. In the case of uh, a continuous variable, uh, for a categorical, I could create um, some new category. Cat e g o r y, yeah. Uh, yeah, e, gory, thank you. Um, some new category uh, for NAs, missing values. That's maybe a, a better uh, strategy um, if I had a categorical variable. In, in this case, it doesn't make a lot of sense to say that all these people are zero years old. Um, so this isn't such a great option either. Um, but we do keep everything else about them. Maybe it's better. It probably isn't. Okay, um, our next option would be to do something like um, use some average value. So in this case, if we knew the normal distribution of age, we could choose some value right in the middle and say, for any time we don't know, let's say it's about average. Okay, that's a little bit better. Um, that's probably a reasonable approach. In some cases, we're going to make the data not so good. In some cases, it's going to be uh, okay. It's going to be a reasonable guess. Um, again, it's not it's not a fantastic strategy, but it's it is a strategy that and it could work. Um, and unfortunately, in these situations, sometimes there is no best. Um, the very last strategy, and the one I like the best, is to create a machine learning algorithm to predict the missing value. Okay, this is, in my opinion, the very best way to handle the situation. Ding, ding, this is the winner. Okay, but that said, um, this is also a very complicated solution. Uh, so, to give you just a little bit of intuition on this, what we would do is we would say, all right, um, we'll take all of the people who have, who are male and have an age and have passenger class three and um, have this fare that they were pay paid and got on, on in Queensboro, which is Q. Uh, we'll take all of those people and we'll predict a value about the same as that. Um, 
we could do that a variety of ways by tra training machine learners. Um, the most obvious, most straightforward, and, and questionably least accurate is to probably use something like uh, linear regression. So we would use linear regression for the rest of the data set to generate uh, age, where a when age is um, missing. That's probably the best option. Um, like I said, it's the best option in a, in a in a bunch of choices that aren't so great. All right. So that said, this option is a little bit beyond where we are in the class now. So I'm not going to ask you to do that. So I think as a reasonable alternative, I'm go we're just going to use um, the average age right now. So first of all, what is the average age? Um, so df.age talks about all of the ages of the entire pop uh, the it's the series of ages for the entire uh, sample. And if I say dot mean, that will give me the average age, which happens to be 29.7 years of old age. So I'm going to create a variable called average age, and I will assign that to it. Very good. All right. Now, df.age. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, df.age is equal to df.age.fillNA. This is a special uh, method just for filling NAs. And I'm going to say uh, the value I want you to replace the missing ones with is, you guessed it, average age. So I'll do that. And then what we can do is we can see age dot is null. You can see that there are no longer uh, missing ages. And if we were to call out the data frame, we could roll down here and we could see that there are no more NAs, but there's a very common occurring value that's 29.7, which is exactly what we had seen earlier. Um, so yeah, we could have just introduced something bad into our model. It's really hard to know. Uh, what the implications of filling these missing variables are going to be until you actually create a final data product. Um, and once we have a once we have a holdout and we we validate the performance and see how the perform see how the model would perform on a on a real data set, um, we would have some understanding of the sin that we just committed here. That said, um, sometimes this is just the best we can do. Uh, Josh is known for saying something, Josh Wills is known for saying something I'd like to repeat here, and that's that um, he said in his entire adult life he's learned two things. The first thing is the uh, data is always a mess. And of course if you're uh, like me, you're probably wondering, okay Josh, well what's the second thing? When you ask him that, and he expects you to ask him that, he would tell you that the uh, second thing that he learned is that to never order the wine pairing. Um, and that's really Josh. All right. Well, thanks a lot for listening. Um, I hope I gave you some intuition on how missing values work. And uh, that's it for this week. Enjoy the labs.